Alright, well, I hope you can hear me. I guess that's the goal. Okay, so. Let's start with writing down the topic. Let's think of that. So, simple machines work in power. You learned this in sixth grade. It should be really easy. Um, really easy unit. And after this, we're going to start reviewing for the SOL. Alright, so you don't have to write this down. This is just giving you an example. This is the Great Pyramid of Giza of Egypt is one of the great seven wonders of the world. It's big enough to hold ten professional football fields and it's made of two million stone blocks and each one of those blocks is equal to the weight of two large cars. However, when it was built, there were no machines as the ones we have now, so they would have had to use literally the six simple machines to build it. In class, we'll watch the video that shows how they think this might have happened. Okay. What is work? You do need to write everything on here. Okay, it says work is a force acting through a distance. So there has to be both the force and there has to be a distance that it was moved through. So holding something that's really heavy for a long time may feel like work, but is technically not considered work, not by the definition. However, carrying a feather from one side of the room to the next side would be considered work. Okay, so how do you calculate it? It's force times distance. Yes, there's more math. And it's measured in newton meters or joules. Okay, so you can see that energy and work are related. But that's why you can measure it in joules. So here's an example. If you lifted an object weighing 200 newtons through a distance of 5 meters, how much work did you do? You just multiply it, so it would be 1,000 joules. Okay, power. Power is defined as the rate at which work is done, and it's measured in watts. Okay, that W in the middle of power might help you remember what. It gives you two different equations. On your test, the equations will be on there. You just have to plug the numbers in where they go. Okay, so work divided by time, or force times distance, since that's how you find work, divided by time. Okay, so a machine is any instrument that makes work easier. And work input is exactly what it says. How much work goes into the machine and work output is how much comes out or how much has been done by the machine. So the machines make work easier because they change the size or the direction. All right, efficiency. What it says up there is the comparison of work output to work input. What's important here is that you have to know that they can never... Um, Output can never be more than input. They're always going to be equal. A mechanical advantage, though, is what we're looking for when we think about machines. It's a, up here it says the number of times a machine multiplies the effort force, but in regular words, what that means is what can we do to the machine to make it work better for us? All right, so there are six simple machines. This is a Rube Goldberg cartoon. We're going to be working on some of those in class. Okay, so the first one is an inclined plane. It's defined as a flat, slanted surface. Example would be a ramp. Okay, so you can see in the picture, if I'm putting heavy furniture into a moving truck, it's much easier to have that inclined plane for me to walk up than trying to lift it up. How do you make it work better for you, the mechanical advantage? You increase, um, or you decrease, sorry, the slant. You don't want it to be steep. Oops, sorry. Second one is a wedge. It says an inclined plane that moves. Um, more importantly, it's an inclined plane that's sharp on one end. The way that you increase the me mechanical advantage is you sharpen it. Okay, and there are several examples. I would definitely know the examples. Okay, the third simple machine is a screw. It's an inclined plane wrapped around a central bar. The way that you make it work better is you increase the number of threads. Okay, so rather than only having maybe five of these on here, you might use ten. And the more 
threads it has, the more likely it is to stay in whatever you put, you put it in. Okay, a lever. It says a rigid bar that is free to pivot on a fixed point. The fixed point is called a fulcrum. Um, a seesaw would be first class, where the fulcrum is in the middle. Second class, the fulcrum is away from you. And third class, it is near you. So let me give you an example that you could use to help you remember. You hold your arm out. First class is you bending your arm at the elbow, right in the middle. That's first class. Second class is you bending your arm only at the wrist. It's away from you, but it's allowed to pivot as you move your hand back and forth at the wrist, away from you. The third class is keeping the whole arm still and moving it at the shoulder. Okay, so remember, elbow, wrist, shoulder. Elbow, wrist, shoulder, first, second, third. <laughs> All right, number five is a pulley, a rope, a belt, a chain, something wrapped around a grooved wheel. But what this does is it, it helps it, it says it increase by adding pulleys, but also think about this. So instead of having gravity work against you when you're lifting up something, by pulling on the pulley, gravity now works with you. Okay, so, and the more pulleys you have, you could lift up a car with just one hand if you had enough pulleys hooked up to it. Wheel and axle are the last simple machine. Note that the wheel is larger, it turns the smaller axle. Okay, so if you look in the picture, your axle is this pipe that holds the wheel on. The mechanical advantage depends on the radius of the wheel. Okay, so the bigger the wheel is, um, it's going to move slower, but it's going to be able to move more um, weight. And then, so it kind of depends what you're using the wheel for. All right, examples of wheel and axle, bicycle, Ferris wheels, gears. Um, and we're going to look at compound machines. All right, a compound machine. It's two or more simple machines put together and used as one. Lots and lots of examples. Example, washing machine, blender, sewing machine, etc. But remember, you can only get the same amount of work out of it that you put into it. It's never going to be able to be more. We'll do, we'll do these things in class. This is the Rube Goldberg. We'll talk about those. Mm -hmm. All right, hopefully you were looking at those little fail um, pictures. All right, I will see you guys in class. Hopefully you're having a good weekend.